All right, Shalom Israel. This is the brother Awaraba coming back at you again with another lesson. Before I get started, I would like to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakal Kadash, Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutation to the hopeful elect that's out there continuously pushing this word and getting this truth out there and edifying the body and the nation of Yasharala, who is known as the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, okay, that are scattered across and scattered abroad through the four corners of the planet Earth, all right? Shalom to you, sincere Aquafium that are actually out there that are subscribed to my channel as well and that tune in each time I do one of these. <coughs> all right, Shalom and greetings. So today I want to talk about, you know, the mindset of a lot of our lessons that come across as a, a doom and a gloom type lesson, okay? Like a, you know, a thief in the night type of thing or one that, you know, really goes in, you know, just on what can happen or what's going to happen to our people if they don't correct themselves. OK, and so a lot of times, you know, we look at a lot of lessons and we think, oh, man, I don't want to listen to this. I don't want to do that. Or why is Great Millstone only putting up lessons that deal with, you know, uh, destroying us or us getting destroyed? OK, well, you have to remember that the prophets are here. We're here to sound the alarm. We're here to warn our people. OK. We're here to do what the Lord commanded us to do, and that is to preach, and that is to come out and tell you what shall happen if you don't repent, okay? So it's not that, you know, the prophets or the men of the Lord are coming out to just preach negativity, to preach hate, or to see you get destroyed, but more or less, it's so that you get delivered, okay? And so I want to touch on that a little bit during this lesson. So I'm going to pull some precepts and uh, most high willingness is uh, edify. Okay. So the first thing that you have to understand is that whom the Lord loveth, he chastens. Okay. You know, and we all, you know, we all have taken a... <laughs> A beat down once or twice within this truth, you know, whether it be, you know, naturally, I mean, spiritually or when we were younger and, we're, you know, carnally, you know, but we all know why it happened. OK. Get a quick precept for you. This is our uh, first Corinthians 11 <coughs> and um, 32. OK. Says, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world, okay? And so that's exactly why we come out with those lessons so that we can warn our people so that you are not destroyed, okay? It's not so that, you know, it's a situation to where we just, you know, coming out and all we want to see is all you, you, wick, you wicked Negroes, you know, getting destroyed and getting, you know, cast out because that's not what we want to see. OK, we want to see our people get delivered. That's why we're here. We're here to wake up our people so that we can get the heck out of this place, man. Turn from your wicked ways. All right. Don't, that's why those lessons are being put up. OK, so it's not about some situation to where it's always negativity or doom. And if you think in that way, then maybe you should check yourself. All right. This is a quick precept here. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. Okay. And it says, Now I rejoice not. Here, I'll start up right here. There. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that you ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Okay, you were made sorry. Exactly, man. When people wake up to the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of this truth, and they realize that they've erred, and that they have been erring, you know, making that same mistake for so long, then they decide to change their ways. 
Okay, regardless if it's from fear that the Lord is going to destroy you or, or destroy them, or it could be from, you know, simply just being ashamed of your life, of the, of the life and the, and the lifestyle you had. You know, for whatever reason that it may be, we rejoice that you return from those ways. You return back to the Heavenly Father and the, the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Okay? Verse 10, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Okay? That's what this is all about. It's about getting saved. Getting saved from our enemies. Getting the heck out of this place, man. Getting delivered. All right? For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. That's right, man. Okay? Turn to life, to the law, statutes, and commandments, man, of the Heavenly Father. That's what this is all about. Okay? That, looking after each other, man, looking after your neighbor, your fellow Israelite. Okay? So, you know... 2 Corinthians 10 really goes into this. I mean, it gives us a, a real <coughs> peace of mind of why, you know, we do these, why we warn you, why we warn y'all, man. Why we do these lessons, because we're commanded to teach and we go out and we teach and we prophesy and we, and we tell you, okay? That's what we're supposed to do. That's our job. Or otherwise, we'll be destroyed. All right, so this is 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. And this is Paul speaking right here, okay? I'm only going to read so much of this. I'm going to get to the point because this is not going to be a real long lesson. But, you know, <coughs> it's going to be where it's going to do what it has to do. So this is uh, 2 Corinthians verse 10, verse 1, and it says, Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Hamasiak, who in presence I am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. That's right. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I'm in present with that confidence or with to think bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. OK. So I'm going to just jump down uh, to the point here. Okay, maybe I'm in the slot, you just bear with me. I think I may be in the wrong one. Stand by. Yeah, okay, Salakia was first Corinthians ten. First Corinthians. Okay, Salakia. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Hamasiach. But with many of them, the Most High was not well pleased, okay? For they were overthrown in the wilderness and that's exactly right, okay? So you got to think of it just like this. Even though, even though the Lord is there, he's come to deliver us and he's, you know, he's, he's, he's asking us to repent and do by his words. You still have people that were in the wilderness back in that time that forbade the law, that, that disobeyed. Okay. And that's the same, it's the same situation that we're in today. Okay. All of these people basically died in the wilderness and they didn't get to see the promised land. Okay, why? Because they would not turn from wickedness. Okay, and so I mean, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to go in to Corinthians 10 and you can read it for yourselves, but that's pretty much my point on this one. And, um, you know, with that, I'm just gonna say, call Halal, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakak Badash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom.